you all for coming to today's uh, final press conference before the great uh, big showdown here between two undefeated world champions, Mikey Garcia and Robert Easter Jr. Great media turnout. I think it uh, shows the magnitude of this fight. Uh, we have uh, media here from all over the country. Uh, this is a fight which uh, really is uh, one of the most significant this year in the sport of boxing. This has been a spectacular year for boxing. It has been a spectacular year for the PBC, for Premier Boxing Champions. I'd like to thank uh, Al Heyman. Uh, this fight here is sort of like the cherry on top on what we've seen this year already. Uh, it is one of the most anticipated showdowns. A unification fight is always uh, very special. And this one here is extra special because as I said, two undefeated world champions in their prime uh, daring to be great, daring to challenge for greatness. Uh, top to bottom, you look at this card, 15 fights, I think it's sort of like a record. I don't remember having ever promoted 15 fights. Uh, top, to top to bottom, amazing card. Uh, it really is a boxing spectacular taking, care, taking place here at the Staples Center. Uh, it is... Um, a little bit of everything. Uh, we are going to have some of the great talent from the famed uh, Robert Garcia team uh, showcasing their talent. We have Louis Correa, Robert Marroquin, Brandon uh, Ganton on the card. Uh, Robert is here, one of the best trainers, not the best trainer we have today in the sport. Uh, then we have an Olympian, the most talked about Olympian, Carlos Balderas from Santa Maria and his brother showcasing his talents. Uh, Remember that name, uh, Carlos Balderas, because I am sure that he will be headlining Staples Center uh, one day. Then we have uh, Fabian Maidana, Marcos Maidana's brother, who is quickly making a name for himself, 15 and all, with 11 knockout. It's a very special place for Fabian to come here to Staples Center, because his brother made history here. Remember some years ago when he beat uh, Victor Ortiz, uh, right here across the street at Staples Center. Then, um, on the televised portion of the card, uh, we have a stellar lineup as well, with Mario Barrios, a fighter who is 21 and 0, is today the fighter who carries the, the, the state of Texas. Texas is very rich in boxing history, and there was always somebody who carried the state uh, and made Texas proud, and that man today is Mario Barrios, one of the most exciting fighters in the sport. Then when it comes to action and excitement, and when it comes to must-see TV, uh, there is one man who really stands above. Uh, it's a kind of fighter you don't want to miss a minute, you don't want to miss a second, because you just never know what happens, and that is King Kong himself. Yes, we will have King Kong in the house on Saturday night, and that is uh, King Kong Ortiz, who is coming off a tremendous, what I think, uh, leading fight of the year candidate uh, when he fought uh, uh, some months ago, uh, Deontay Wilder. And then, of course, uh, as I mentioned, the cherry on top with Garcia and Easter. I'd like to thank all the fighters. I know they all trained hard. I know they're ready. They're ready to entertain. They're ready to showcase their talent. I'd like to thank uh, my co-promoter, uh, Tom Brown from TGB, and I'd like to uh, say a special big thank you to Lee Seidman and his tremendous team here at Staples Center. Staples Center is the premier venue in the United States. It's the busiest venue in the United States. Uh, great concert, great sporting events, truly only the best of the best to perform at Staples Center, and that's what we have here on Saturday night. I'd like to thank Andy Foster, the head of the California State Athletic Commission, for his support of this card. And of course, I'd like to thank our sponsors, uh, Corona, for always being the corner of boxing. It's a pleasure now for me to introduce to you the man who I uh, had the pleasure to introduce many times, who is first and foremost a boxing fan, but he's as well the leading executive when it comes to boxing in the world, week after week, month after month, you see the best fighting the best, and yes, that's on Showtime. It's a pleasure for me to introduce to you the president of Showtime, Steven Espinosa. Thanks, Richard. I'm 
really looking forward to seeing the Ring Star, the, the young collection of Ring Star prospects, uh, which will be featured. So make sure you're in in Staples Center early to get a chance to do that as well. You know, there are fighters who say they want tough fights, and then there are fighters who actually take tough fights. Uh, we know how social we know how social media is nowadays. You know, Twitter fingers, Instagram, people are busy. <laughs> You know, the reality is there's a big difference between fighters who say they want tough fights and fighters who take tough fights. Obviously, in Mikey Garcia, Robert Easter Jr., we have two fighters who, not just, who don't just say they want tough fights, they actually take the tough fights. Top five lightweight versus top five lightweight. Champion versus champion, world title unification. This is the third world title unification on Showtime this year. There's no other network, no other service that's doing that. In fact, that's more world title unification fights than all the other networks have done this year combined. By this point, any boxing fan knows Mikey Garcia. He's a top five pound for pound fighter. He's had four fights since he's been back from his layoff. All he's done is win a title in a third division, defeat a four division titleist, in Adrian Broner and pick up a fourth weight division of his own and now he's going into a title unification fight. As for Robert Easter, he is the longest reigning title holder at 135 and probably the most challenging, the most avoided fighter at 135. So I've got to give kudos and recognition to both of these fighters because no one's rushing to fight Mikey Garcia, no one's rushing to fight Robert Easter. And yet, this was an easy fight to make because both of them were anxious to do it. It's not just a top heavy card. We've got the return of Luis Ortiz, one of the top 10 heavyweights in the world. Uh, we've got an exciting super lightweight belt with Mario Barrios and Jose Roman. And uh, on top of that, we will be streaming uh, on the Showtime Facebook and YouTube accounts starting at 5 p.m. Eastern, excuse me, 5 p.m. Pacific. Uh, we will have the Fabian uh, Maidana fight, as well as a Carlos Balderas fight, and that is streaming again on the Showtime social media pages. Those of you who have been watching Showtime know that we've been televising the undercard fights on Extreme and streaming for literally years. Uh, we're happy to see other networks getting on board. Um, it's a great idea, it's great for the fans, it's great for the sport, and we urge all of you to tune in starting at 5 p.m. on our social media, and then 7 p.m. Pacific on Showtime. Thanks. Outline, I agree with almost everything except one. Um, I don't think that Mikey Garcia is one of the top five pound for pound. I think he is the top pound for pound. I think that makes it that more, that more exciting because I can tell you Robert Easter knows that he will be ready. He will be ready. He trained for that. He's been dreaming about that fight. That's the fight he wanted. And when we announced it a couple months ago at Staples Center, that is exactly what he told me. He said, Richard, I have no idea how long I waited for this fight. And finally, it's here. You're going to see the very, very best Robert Easter. And I think Team Garcia knows that. Mikey knows that. But Mikey always finds a way to solve the toughest puzzles and looks out for the toughest challenges. And that's what makes a fighter pound for pound the best. When he makes great fighters look ordinary. But on Saturday night, watch and see. Watch and see. Mikey better be ready because I know Robert Easter is. It's a pleasure now for me to introduce to you Brian Custer, who will be asking the fighters uh, some questions. And I'm going to pass it on to Brian now. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Richard. It's time to hear from the fighters. It's going to be a great night on Showtime Championship Boxing, triple header of fights, world championship unification fight in the main event. You get a heavyweight slugfest as your co-main, and then you open the night with two guys who exciting fighters to begin the night, Mario Barrios and Jose Roman. Mario, this will be an interesting night. First time you've really fought someone same height as you. You fought maybe a few guys the same height as you, but do you see this as your toughest test yet of your career? Yeah, definitely. 
I mean, I know for sure this is my toughest fight. I mean, um, I'm very happy to have this this huge step up. This is, you know, this is gonna be one of those breakout performances. You know, I've been looking forward to. I mean, um, I want to thank Roman, you know, for taking this for taking this fight. You know, I know he's coming with a lot to prove. And I mean, it's all my, you know, I'm carrying, you know, my city of San Antonio, Texas, it's on my back. I mean, uh, I love fighting here in LA. I always get, you know, a lot of love every time I come here. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to a very exciting fight. And what does it mean to you to be fighting at Staples Center for the first time? Oh man, this this opportunity, like I said, is huge. I mean, especially to be fighting at the Staples Center. You know, this that's this is where all of the greats, you know, have fought. And I mean, for me to be fighting here now, you know, it's it's all, I mean, it, it's definitely a dream come true. You know, it, it still feels surreal. Jose, you're fighting basically at home. I mean, you're from this area. What would a win over Mario Barrios do for your career? Well, Mar Mario Barrios is a talented young boxer. You know, uh, a win over him will open a lot of doors for me. Um, you know, I want to thank Showtime, PVC, and Ringstar for giving me this opportunity. You know, and uh, the people are going to the people are going to love this fight because you guys are, for the most part, the same height. What should we expect Saturday night? Uh, a war between two Mexican fighters. <laughs> We move to the co-feature, and you have two men coming off, basically fighting for the world title. Both looking to establish themselves in the heavyweight division here in boxing. Luis Ortiz, King Kong, and Razvan Kujano. And Razvan, we'll start with you, because you're coming off a year layoff. The Ortiz team believes you've got some issues when it comes to fighting lefties. Will any of that be a factor Saturday night? Hello, everyone. I want to thank, first of all, I'm sorry for your uh, question, but let me thank to all these beautiful people who came here. I want to thank to the promoter. I want to thank to Showtime for this huge opportunity for me. And special, I want to Thank to my team, journey, my management, and my actually real team who work with me, who set me ready for this fight. Now let's get back to to your question. Uh, you asked me if uh, a southpaw can put me problem. You talk about uh, probably the fight against Donovan Dennis, right? Uh, for that fight, uh, if you remember, I was fighting in a tournament, and in the first fight, I was cut above my uh, right eye. I had, after the fight, I had one month to train. I didn't was heal properly to can spar. I had zero sparring for that fight. And I think that was, uh, that was the main thing, the problem for the fight against the Nolandonians. But now I am really ready. This, uh, when we got this call for this fight, I was already in shape. And we had to just make the adjustment for, uh, for the Salpa. We brought the sparring partners and we had three full weeks full of fun. I'm ready for Saturday night. Thank you. Razvan, was there anything you saw in the Deontay Wilder fight that Luis Ortiz had that you said, you know what, I can capitalize on that and become victorious as well? Yeah, that was a great fight. First of all, I want to Congratulate Ortiz for that fight. That was an amazing performance. And yeah, I saw plenty of stuff. Special, the main thing what uh, is working with Ortiz is the, the sharp point too. Luis, this will be your first fight since that loss to Deontay Wilder. Do you believe a victory put you right back in line for a world title shot again and a rematch with Deontay Wilder. Luis, es tu primera pelea desde que la derrota con Deontay. ¿Usted piensa que una victoria en el sábado te pone de nuevo eh, como el número uno de los mejores del, de la división de Hegel? Eh, 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 bueno, buenas tardes. Sería, eh, sería grandioso una revancha. Eh, conmigo igual de yo vine a hacer lo mejor que se hacer en el ritmo es lo único que se hace yo no sé hacer poner un cuadro no sé hacer nada lo único que se hace es tirar piñazo 
y vengo a hacer lo mejor que hago, sí sería una gran oportunidad y, y, y sí la deseo, la deseo con el alma, antes de, de que me pararan la pelea hubieran querido que me sacaran en camilla, o me hubieran arrancado la cabeza antes de que me hubiesen parado la pelea. He says, thank you very much for everyone here and, and he's happy to be here. Uh, without a doubt, 100% a victory on Saturday. Uh, we'll put him back in line. He doesn't feel that he should have, you know, be bumped anywhere but in the top five uh, as a heavyweight. The only thing he knows how to do is fight and that's what he's coming to do Saturday night. Uh, and he's 100%, you know, dedicated to his craft. As far as the Wilder fight, he feels that he would have preferred that he left on a stretcher or, or been brutally knocked out. As uh, you know, some people are saying that it happened. He obviously it wasn't. It was a TKO stoppage. On um, you know, just he couldn't go any further. But he would prefer it the other way because he's a fighter and, and that's what he wants. And uh, he's happy to be here. He thanks everyone and uh, looking forward for Saturday night. Luis Razvan believes that he saw some things that you were vulnerable. And he looks to exploit those on Saturday. What should we expect from King Kong then on Saturday? Luis, tu oponente piensa que él ve algo en ti eh, para el sábado para poder eh, tener una ventaja. ¿Usted qué piensa de eso y qué esperan de ti para el sábado en la pelea? Ah, eh, eh, me quieren quitar la comida. Y, y te vuelvo a repetir que lo único que vas a hacer es tirar piñazo. Y cuando hay alguien hambriento frente a uno y hay un solo plato de comida, hay que, hay que bajarse. Y eso lo voy a hacer el sábado. He says that that's what he believes and that's, you know, on him, but at, in, his, uh, in his frame of mind, there's, there's only one plate of food on the table, and Razvan's coming to take it, and when there's two hungry guys, the hungrier guy's gonna, is going to eat. So we'll see Saturday night. Then we get to our main event. You heard Stephen talk about it, unification. At Showtime Championship Boxing, we are all about the best fighting the best in unification fights, big fights. It was a fight that Robert Easter Jr. won at this fight. Part of our triple header. And the, when you talk about the lightweight division, unification is rare. This will be the, only the 10th fight, unification fight, in the history of the lightweight division. First one came in 1941. The last unification fight at lightweight was nearly a decade ago, nine years ago. The last time Showtime Championship brought boxing brought you a unification lightweight fight 13 years ago, 2005, and it was one of the greatest fights ever. When you had Diego Corrales Stop Jose Luis Castillo in the 10th round. If this fight is anything like that, it should be one hell of a night, Saturday night at Staples. So let's start with the trainers. Robert Garcia. I think you've been trainer of the year like 500 gazillion times, right? Trainer of his brother. How much of a risk is Mikey taking by fighting Robert, who has such a height and reach advantage? Look, there's always risk in any fight, but uh, we're, we're very well prepared. Mikey's mentally ready for a big challenge. And, uh, you know, there's always risk. You know, there's risk. This guy's very tall. You know, he's, uh, I'm sure he's going to try to use his reach and, uh, and try to fight on the outside, but we're ready for whatever he brings. Robert Easter Jr., the IBF lightweight champion. He's got a tag team. When you talk about trainers, his father, Robert Easter Sr., and then he has Kevin Cunningham. And we know the stable that he now trains with Kevin. Devin Alexander, Erickson Lubin, Javante Davis, and on and on and on. So this is the first fight that you guys have had together. Robert, first time you spent the entire time in Florida, away from Toledo, Ohio. In fact, Robert Easter, the only world champion ever from Toledo, Ohio. Uh, Kevin, what fundamentally did you have to change with Robert once he joined Camp Cunningham in Florida? Well, from a fundamental standpoint, um, there wasn't any major changes. I mean, uh, Robert's always been a, a 
tremendous fighter. Uh, he's an excellent boxer when he wants to box. Uh, basically, we just you know put extra emphasis on how we want to fight Mikey Garcia, and uh, you know I think he has the natural uh, skill and ability. And like you said, he's six feet tall, lightweight, long reach, and uh, you know. We are prepared to, to dictate the tempo, control, distance range, and, and, and everything that we really want to do. He's done it the last 10 weeks in camp, and I think he's going to do it on Saturday night. Robert, you know, you, you talk with your brother. Obviously, Mikey's going to make his own decisions, but when you guys are talking about taking fights, did... Robert Easter Jr.'s past two performances make you guys more inclined to take this unification fight? First of all, you didn't mention my stable. Oh, man, we, we, we'd be here all day. Your stable's long. <laughs> Look, uh, I didn't even see those last two performances. We're ready for the best robbery, so you know, mostly everybody thinks he lost against Fortuna. You know, uh, so that's not the fight that interest me to watch. I want to see the best Robert out there. You know, there's very few fights out there where I could see, you know, really see the best out of him. But, you know, we're ready. We're ready. Kevin, you're quoted as saying, Mikey, overlooking, being disrespectful to Robert by not talking about him to the media and talking about other fighters and other fights. Expound on that. Well, I mean, it's obvious that, you know, basically, you know, over the last, last couple of weeks, you know, they're talking more about Earl Spence and Lomachenko than as opposed to talking about this fight on Saturday night with Robert Easter Jr. So I looked at that as disrespect and overlooking. And, but I think that, they, you know, he's got a seasoned trainer. He, and, Mikey's a pro, so, I mean, I don't think they are totally overlooking him, but I think it's totally disrespectful to talk about all these fights next when you haven't dealt with Robert Easter Jr. yet. Let's talk to the fighters. Mikey, let's start with you. What does a unification victory over Robert Easter Jr. do for your legacy? And would you consider it a signature victory on your record? Well, this is the first time I'll have a title unification match. It does mean a lot. Facing another undefeated champion in the same weight class, you know, it will definitely help my legacy and help my career. I feel that this is the best option, the best fight for me right now. I'm taking the steps, the proper steps to move forward and like I always say, cement my name, cement my career for, for the ages. And there isn't another fight in front of me that does that other than the Robert Easter fight. Right now in my career, I'm all about taking the biggest fight, the biggest challenge, and that's why I'm taking this. I feel that Robert Easter is a tough, undefeated champion who is coming with everything he has. This is also his biggest fight. So him bringing the best out of him will only allow me to bring the best out of me. And, and that's why I really you know, asked for this fight. That's why I wanted this. We were looking at options, but nothing else interested me or nothing else excited me enough like this fight. Robert, you know, it's interesting just talking with some of the people here. And you talk about it to a number of people about this fight. And just about everyone keeps picking Mikey Garcia. Does that upset you? Does that motivate you? Um, it is what it is. You know, uh, fans, you know, they have their favorites. You know, you either gonna pick one guy or the other. You know, so uh, we did what we had to do in training camp. To prepare for this fight in uh, July 28th, you will see. Have you felt like you've been overlooked? Um, 
No, not exactly. I, I really don't pay attention to all, you know, the overlooking of uh, he say, she say. Uh, July 28th, we still got to get in the ring. You know, we still got to get in there and, and, and throw these hands. So all the, uh, the, the, the talk, that, that doesn't bother me. Mikey, when you talk about your weight division, great fighters, champions like yourself, champions like Robert, you got Lomachenko there. Do you believe the winner of this fight, best lightweight in the world? I think a lot of that is up to opinions and I don't, like, just like Robert says, he doesn't really pay much attention to what one says versus someone else. I don't really look at what the media might put down as best in the division or on any list, but overall, we're the only two undefeated champions in the division. So the winner should be considered the best. Whether some agree or not, that's their opinion. But in my eyes, this winner will determine the best in the division. We're the only two undefeated champions. Robert, in a article you did with the boxing scene, uh, you were quoted as saying, listen, Mikey Garcia, in my opinion, has been overrated. Who's really the big name he's beaten? Do you really believe that? Of course, the only big name he has beaten is Adrian Brown. You know, everybody knows that, you know. Like I said, champion versus champion, this is going to determine, you know, who is the better fighter out the weight class? Like you said, we're the only two undefeated fighters in his weight class. What do you think a win over Mikey Garcia does for your career, your legacy that you're trying to build? Um, it's going to add, you know, big attention. You know, uh, it does a lot for my career, you know, put me in a recognition, you know, where I'm supposed to be. Um, like I said, uh, this fight right here is a big fight, but I look at all my fights like a big fight. But this is, you know, unification bout, champion versus champion, undefeated versus undefeated, two warriors. You know, July 28th, you will see, you know, a lot of fireworks and uh, excitement. Mikey, could you really, when it boils down to it, see yourself fighting at welterweight, considering I think you said at 140 you're at a disadvantage because those guys are big. So why why could you see yourself fighting at welterweight next, and especially someone like Errol Spence, who is probably one of the bigger, powerful welterweights? I'm telling you, I, I'm here to take the biggest fight, the biggest challenges, and that's why I'm willing to move up to welterweight. I'm very serious when I say that I will be at welterweight very soon. I really look forward to taking on someone like Errol Spence for that reason because, because everybody says don't do it it's the biggest threat the biggest challenge I'm way out of my league trying to go there well, that's what actually excites me and motivates me the most I want to prove everybody the kind of fighter that I am and I, I haven't had those opportunities yet I've been fighting you know champions and undefeated champions but it seems like I'm always the favorite. It seems like my accomplishments uh, don't get enough credit sometimes because, well, you're supposed to win. You're supposed to beat that guy. But a fight with Errol Spence is a whole different league, and that's why I, I'm really interested in, in getting that fight. We'll wrap it up with this same question to both of you. Let's start with you, Mikey. First time for you fighting here in seven years. Back home, what should we expect Saturday night? Este sábado va a ser una gran noche de boxeo, gran pelea. Estaré peleando aquí por primera vez en siete años. Es bonito regresar aquí a casa, sentir el apoyo de mi, todo mi público. Todo aquel que no ha podido ir a mirarme a, a mis otras peleas en otros estados, ahora sí pueden venir y disfrutar aquí en vivo, aquí en Los Ángeles. Estoy muy contento, muy agradecido de que mi oponente aceptó venir aquí a Los Ángeles. Una gran pelea, en realidad dos campeones, dos invictos, vamos a pelear. No, no puedo estar más contento. Yo les garantizo que voy a dar todo de mí para salir con la victoria y salir triunfador el sábado por la noche. Well, I'm very happy to be here. It's been seven years since I last fought here and to be able to come back and give my local fans and people who support me an opportunity to see me live 
you know, and not just a fight, but a world title unification match, you know, here at Staples Center is just a great thing here in LA. I know other opponents would say no. I'm very happy to be able to give the fans this type of fight here at Staples. You know, um, now I'm coming back as a world champion and I get to unify the titles here in front of my home crowd, hometown, you know, I'm just, there's nothing better that, you know, that I could ask for. This is it, and I'm ready to do everything it takes to win. And I guarantee everybody I'm going to do everything in my part to come out victorious and unified champion on Saturday night. And Robert, we'll end it with this. This place is kind of special to you, too. Last time I looked, you made your professional debut in L.A. at Staples. Now you have the opportunity to unify. What should we expect Saturday? Oh yeah, it's been a long time. Uh, like I said before, you will get a lot of action, a lot of excitement July 28th. And uh, just expect the unexpected. <laughs> before we face off the fighters, we're going to take a couple of questions from members of the media. Mike Hoppinger in Magazine. A question for Robert. When you hear Mikey here talking about Earl Spence, what are, you, what are your thoughts? Uh, he's a fighter, you know, the fights that he wants, you know, you can't tell him what he doesn't want, you know what I'm saying, I mean, future fights that he wants. Uh, Keith Eide from BoxingSin.com. I was wondering if Mikey and Robert could both answer what they remember from the Corrales-Castillo fight, you know, one of the best fights in boxing history. Well, I remember watching it, and you know the the ending was the most dramatic. You know, I was watching. I, I was a lot younger, and I thought Castillo had that. You know, after dropping Corrales, and that that was the the victory right there. And you know, if you blinked, you would have missed it. You know, Corrales stops Castillo. You know, and it was just. I think the biggest, you know, moment, the biggest, the most dramatic moment in boxing for that, for that time, and up until now, you know, it's, it's still one of the top. Robert, could you answer that as well? That's Robert. <laughs> Mid Easter. Um, Chico being one of my uh, favorite fighters, you know, um, you know, he was always a tough warrior. You know, sort of like myself, you know, gave up his height, you know, to uh, <laughs> go in there and battle. But uh, after being dropped, you know, he, you know, he comes back even stronger and finished fights. And uh, then you see him, he finished the fight and the ref stopped it. And he was victorious. Just put a footnote on that. By the way, do you know a number of teams from the NFL and professional teams contacted Showtime? after that fight because coaches wanted to show that ending and that fight to their teams to talk to, to, to those guys and motivate them about perseverance and how you can come back from off the mat. That just shows you the impact that that fight had. Guys, we appreciate it. It's time to face off the fighters. Thank you, Brian. Thank you all. Uh, some other news. Uh, we were able to uh, release some production holes, so there's a very small number of $50 tickets which just went on sale. Uh, make sure you get your tickets. Uh, we expect to sell out a huge crowd here at, at Staples Center. I'll see you all tomorrow at the weigh-in, which we moved inside uh, the concourse of the Staples Center since it's a bit hot, bit hot to do a weigh-in outdoors. So I'll see you tomorrow, and I'll certainly see you Saturday night. Thank you. I'm going to face the fighters now.